Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. We are going to get into this Art X Jelly Cup Gouache. <laughs> so in this video, we will swatch this out, let this dry, and then compare the dry swatches to what the paint looks like wet, so we have some kind of idea for that, and I can reference my video later when I want to paint with that, which I will probably never do, but hey, the thought is good. Plus, remember this, <laughs> this is that crazy sketchbook that did not take watercolor even though it says it's 100% watercolor paper. So I finished the sketchbook completely, made the last page, but on the back of the last page, I do have a blank piece of paper still, so I will be trying this gouache on this last sheet of paper, and so the people, the two people that have won these in the giveaway will know if gouache works on here or not, at least according to what I think. I am also using my Etcher A4 sketchbook, getting ragged because it's getting near the end, which is great. However, because it's getting near the end, I have the paper kind of bubbles up right there. Bubbles, I don't know. You know what I mean. It just sticks up, and I don't want to use an office clip because it does put a groove on the paper. So I just have a hair tie and I'm going to pull it around the paper and scooch it down and hopefully the hair tie doesn't like break and snap at me. <laughs> there we go. So that holds that down perfectly. And I still have tape in there because I have an unfinished, I have an unfinished painting. Uh, yeah, here is an unfinished painting that I have to finish. Ah, <sighs> someday, someday. I also have like five unfinished paintings from my watercolor classes that I teach that I'll get to someday. All right, let's open this up again. I received this from one of you and I will link that video over there. And I was so excited to receive it. It's just a fun little thing. Look at this, okay. So here are the colors and they're just so cute. Now we have to do though the not great job of peeling all of these off. So I did last time label these. Let me get some more light on the subject here. Label them with the name and the pigment information while they were still in the right order because I was afraid if I dropped them or whatever, I would have no idea <laughs> what each of these were. So I did go ahead and do that after that last video or during that last video, I don't remember, but you can see when you open them, it's gonna be a bit messy. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of people open these, but I am really excited to get into these. So real quick though, the slots for the paint are separate. So they do have plastic separating them. So they don't just have to sit in here next to each other. They actually go in slots, which is good. See, I already lost the, the order. It's a good thing I labeled them. I absolutely have to know from you guys. <laughs> have you watched other artists out there on YouTube opening these? And you see that there's all of this paint left on these lids and they never show what they do with the paint on the lids. <laughs> it drives me crazy. So I'm sitting there watching thinking, are they throwing all that paint away or what's the deal? So I am just going to let you know right now that I will use the paint on every single lid because that's the way it's done in my world. That's very thick. So I can definitely see the use of water being a good thing. I do have my water right there, so let's add some water. I'm not even gonna use all of the paint on the lid, so then you might wonder, what am I gonna do with it then? So I've always wondered when I watch those other videos, I'm like, okay, are they gonna use a popsicle stick or their brush or what to get the rest of the paint off the lid or do they literally just throw them away? So I will probably just use my paintbrush since I already have paint on it and scoop the rest of that paint off and stick it in the little jelly cup and call it a plan. I'm also kind of debating how thick to put this on. I want it to spread smoothly and show its true color but it's kind of fun too to have a gradient but I think, I think we're good dries very quickly. All right, just to show you what I'm gonna do here, quite a bit of paint left, paintbrush, scoop it all off, stick it in there. Now I feel that I pretty much got it all off. It's pretty good. There's hardly any left in my paintbrush. In fact, I'll probably do that first next time on the next cup, put it in there, and then I can use the paint that's on my brush to do some of the swatch so that I don't waste a thing. And the swatching is sped up a lot because it takes forever to peel all the individual lids off and then take the paint off the lids and then paint in a big swatch. I should have done smaller swatches, I think. 
breaking up time lapse here for a minute because I did notice and I wondered in the brown if we didn't have some binder separation and it's very obvious here in this ultramarine and I will show that to you here in just a moment but what I'm going to do is just take a thin brush and mix it up. You can see that separation there is pretty drastic. Just lay this color down real quick, get it out of my brush. So I don't have one of those thin tools handy but I have a super skinny brush so just mix that all up. I think it will be better mixed. This one's super thick, probably because of that separation. All right, it's much happier now. Look how thick this is, so thick. Now what I will do, hopefully that doesn't drip, take my brush, clean up this edge just a bit, put that away. I just dip my finger in the purple over there because I'm good at that. Take this off the brush to use for the swatch. Ooh, that's really deep and dark and beautiful. All right, I do need to add water to these, I've noticed, because they are quite thick, which is fine, which is good. This particular set has a great color selection in my opinion. I was really happy with all the colors that I had to choose from. I know they make some sets that have slightly different colors in them, maybe pastels and whatnot I have seen online, but this was a great rounded out set for me. Now that they are all dry and laid out in here, I want to see how different they look dry versus when I very first put them on the papers. We've got a couple of different cameras going here so we can see, hopefully, if everything works right, <laughs> how all that will go. The only hard part is this isn't going to be necessarily quick because of washing the brush in between every color. <laughs> and I don't want to get out 18 brushes, but let's see what this deep red looks like. Freshly painted versus how it dried. And that's the trick here is trying to get the right dilution to get it to spread. Okay, so that one's pretty similar. I have a little bit lighter gradient right there, so that is a little bit tricky to see, but not too different. Put it right next to it. I actually just should have done a stripe right over the paint instead, but that's okay. This has given us the idea. These first two I don't think will basically cause me any trouble when I paint. They're not gonna dry so differently that I won't know what's going on. Okay, so that one definitely dries lighter than when I first put it on, so that's good to know, good to know. Probably should just make notes on these as I go. I think I will make notes on these as I go, actually. So I'm just gonna put like same and same. This one, I really need to let that dry, but I need to write dries lighter. So I did have some water on my brush again, but that one dries a lot lighter than when it first goes down on the paper. See, these are the things I need to know. And I will make notes of these two drying lighter. I think that one's the same. I know that it's maybe showing darker, but I think that's just because the paint is wet. I would say that one's the same. Black dries lighter. Well, I don't know that it's necessarily lighter. It's just going on shiny and will dry matte, which is what gouache is all about, right? Mm, dropped water on that. Oh, look, and it came off on my finger. Can you see that? Can you see that? Doesn't dry lighter, but dries matte. So we gotta figure that out. Okay, let's try this vermilion. I don't know. That one looks very similar to me. Maybe ever so slightly. See, I can't tell if it's lighter or darker dry. So maybe it's just the same. I'm gonna say same on that one. I might be wrong, but that's okay. It's a little hard for you guys to tell on the camera because of the shine, but I think we could say maybe that one dries ever so slightly darker. Next color, medium yellow. That is way too much paint. I think that's the same. Lake blue. Let's see what lake blue looks like. I think same. So I know they say with gouache, like light colors dry darker, dark colors dry lighter. So this is kind of a fun experiment. I would say that one is lighter going on than it dries. And it looks like all you guys are seeing is glare here. If I move that, it goes on ever so slightly lighter, but it's like barely, so barely. Burnt Umber. So again, it's pretty much the same, except that it goes on shiny and then dries matte. So I don't know that the color changes. That's that's a hard call there, guys. I don't know. Let's see if I can move the glare off again. I think it's the same. So this rose could be interesting. It might be one that's different. I'm sorry, I'm holding this in my hand now because it's so close down to the edge of the table. My tripod won't sit on it. Ooh. Okay, so this is way darker wet than when it dries. So it dries a lot lighter. Good to know. We'll let that dry and then we'll mark that. 
hopefully before I forget. Lemon yellow, I'm gonna say that's the same. Same enough anyway. Whites, we don't have to worry about, so only two left here. Jade green, that was way too much paint. I'm gonna say, shoot. I'm gonna say it's the same, at least in the mass tone there. What's this last one called? Pale green, and I think that one's the same as well. I already forgot that one. Now that one's had some time, it does look like maybe it dries lighter? That one definitely dries lighter. I'll have to rewatch the video for that one because that was like six seconds ago and that's too long ago to remember anything, so. <laughs> Good thing I have this recorded. Okie dokie. All right, so in addition to painting on the last page in this sketchbook here to see how it handles gouache, I will be doing a painting over on this side of my etcher sketchbook, but this is what my water looks like. My This is my dirty one where I rinse all the fresh paint off the brush and then dip and clean for the new one, but even that got some contamination. So going to go refresh my water and we will start a couple of paintings. So this is the picture that I think I'll try with gouache and why do you keep seeing these pictures with the time and the date? Because I go to my computer in the morning and I wake it up and there's these beautiful pictures on it all the time. So I just hit print screen and I save it as a photo reference. It's not something that I can sell or anything in the future because I'm not sure where the pictures came from or if they're copyrighted, but I think they're so pretty and I want to paint them. So that's why you keep seeing these with the date and the time. This is probably the third or fourth one that I've shown you guys. And I'm definitely gonna put my own spin on it, my own style, so it won't look exactly like this. They never do, and they're not supposed to. And the only sketch needed on this one is just to tell me where the hills begin and end on each side and where the sky begins, so there you go. And I started with the lake blue for this one and put in a little bit of ultramarine up in that top right corner and just barely over on the left sky. And then I just laid in some clouds with the violet and I can't remember that other color I think it's just some dirty stuff I had on my palette. I don't know. Maybe I used some of the earth yellow. <laughs> Who knows? And that color there is the vermilion. It's bright and beautiful. That one's the deep red. So it makes this gorgeous red field. And basically that vermilion makes that red field in the back just looks like it has more sunshine on it. I love it. So then I used that green. That was the, I don't know, grass green. And it's so bright I definitely decided to Tone that one down with the burn dumper. So basically just put the burn dumper right over the top of it. And then I wanted to deepen the clouds. So that's ultramarine blue mixed with the violet and I'm just sticking it in there, making the clouds have some more shadow. And then I'm using that same mixture. I think I added a little bit of green and brown to it to get in some dark spots here and there so that I have a basically a background, a layout for where when I put the tulips, I guess they're tulips, I don't know, poppies maybe all over this field. It's got some texture to it. Then I decided to tone down the poppy field back there as well, but that gets fixed as I lay on the poppies or tulips. I don't know what they are, but I'm gonna say tulips. I like tulips. That's gonna be what they are <laughs> from now on. So then I just start laying in the flowers with the brush and I'm like, I don't really like the way this is working out with the brush. I need more actual gouache brushes and I'm sure I could use my pretty watercolor ones, but you can see here I brought out this weird stamper thing and I'll show that to you later. It's from my scrapbooking days and just basically stamp the flowers onto the field and I wish I would have started with that. It would have been so nice. But you can see here that I've gotten the brush back out and I'm putting in some grass, oh like indications of grass I should say. Nothing too detailed, nothing too specific, but really enjoying that and eventually here I'll mix up another dark color and doing the trees back there. Give some indication of some depth. That one's a little bit lighter than the couple that are on the horizon line. So it's really fun. This painting was fun to do. It's really easy to work with gouache. Time for the tape to come off. It's very exciting. I like this little painting. First I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna like it or not, but then I started to really like it. <laughs> This tape is very strange. It's very old and so it's crunchy. You guys can probably hear it, hear that. So this paint gets sticky very easily, very quickly I should say. So I did add water to it constantly when it was over out on the palette. I did not add water into the pans themselves, just the palette part. 
because it gets really sticky. Very old crunchy tape. <laughs> it's not cooperating with me. At least it held a seal. It's fun using this thing. I have to figure out how to clean it now. I dunked it in my water dish, but oh look, I still have tape that's sticking to me. Anyway, dumped it in my water dish and kind of swooshed it around, but I did not get it clean. So I'll probably just take it to the sink. I don't know if you guys can even see that. The light looks really weird to me today. But that was fun. And I have a couple of other things that I can try out. This is from my scrapbooking days. It's a little kit I had that I never once used. So now I'm getting some use out of it. Now that I'm no longer a scrapbooker, I just wish I would have started with this first because I like that way better than the brush. We did that. Now let's see how the paint works in here. Should be interesting. So I figured the success of this painting would be how much or how little water I used on this paper because if you guys recall from the original videos with these sketchbooks, this paper does not handle water at all. So I kept that in mind. I know that I need to thin this paint a little bit here and there though, so I did it anyway. And I saw none of the effects that I had when I used actual just real watercolor on it. So the thickness of the gouache definitely made all the difference in the world with this sketchbook. So those of you that are receiving this, yep, you'll probably have some success with gouache if that's what you want to use. I didn't mind it at all. I even checked, and I forgot to check on the video, but I checked afterwards the other side of this page, and nothing came through. I didn't get any of that modeling like we got when we used the watercolor in previous pages in it. So yeah, gouache is a winner for this one. I imagine colored pencils and a couple other mediums would work really well as well, like pastels. Everything we probably already talked about in that other video a little bit in the comments. We had a lot of comments and I think you guys were mostly all right. So I'm just doing a little winter scene here and this is where gouache gets fun because you can just lay it right over the top of dark colors. So doing the trees was really easy. Doing, doing the whole painting was really easy actually. <laughs> Apparently, gouache is easy, so if you want something easy, go try gouache. And here it is, no longer sped up, so you can see it in real time, what it looks like. I think it turned out really good. I love it, actually. It's one of my favorite paintings. All right, before we conclude this video, we should do the giveaway winner from last week's video on the King Art watercolors. So let me switch screens here, get that going for you. We are at namepicker.net forward slash YouTube, and we just have to enter the URL of that video. That is the video where the King Art watercolors were given, and we have 33 total comments as far as original comments. It doesn't count replies, I don't believe. And we're going to filter that based on specific text, and the text is going to be giveaway says there's only four comments with the word giveaway, so I'm going to pause this video and go double check real quick and come back to this. All right, I went back and read every single comment, and yeah, there are only four that even wanted to enter the giveaway, so I should have just done this by regular drawing, but that's okay. We're just going to finish this because I need to go. One winner, and start raffle and pick winners. Ta-da! Golden Morrison. Congratulations, Golden. There are a lot of scams out there apparently on giveaways now, so make sure you email me at alkalicreekart at gmail.com with your shipping information, and I'll get these sent out to you this week. Hopefully, I'm leaving town, so it might be next week. I'm not very good at getting these things sent out on time, but I'll do my best once I hear from you. So I'll never ask you to go to some other random website or anything like that to enter your information. You have to email me at the Gmail in my about, in the description box, all of that in order for me to get these sent out to you. So hopefully we avoid all the scammers. So don't respond to anything that makes you go somewhere else. And that's not me. Okay. All right. Glad we got that out of the way. So what do I think about gouache? I think it's really fun. I mean, look at what we created. This is just fun stuff. Being able to go on top of your existing paint in a little more opaque layer is kind of freeing for sure. So I'm going to enjoy painting with that. In fact, I have a ton of sketchbooks. If you guys saw in my sketchbook tour video where I show you all of them, I'll link that up in the corner for you. I think I'm gonna pull one out and just dedicate it entirely to gouache. So maybe one that's not suited very well for watercolor, kind of like the one we used today, except different. And then we will be playing with gouache this week and next in my watercolor class that I teach at the college. I think it'll be a fun contrast for my students to play with gouache and see what they think is compared to watercolor because they've been using watercolor for a little while now and 
I don't know, show them something different. That's what the class is all about, is to show them fun tips, fun techniques, things they might not have heard of, might not have used, and we have so much fun. Okay, I've said fun about 10,000 times in this video, so you should probably go back and watch it from the beginning and play some kind of fun game for as many times as I've said fun. All right, guys, I have more painting to get to, so I'm gonna let you go for now, but I will see you in the next video. I'm really looking forward to it. Bye for now. Having trouble over here with the camera. Shoot. Oh my goodness. Hang on. Technical difficulties. And there's cat hair in my paint already. Don't know how that happens. <laughs> That's what I get. I'm using a tripod that's very broken. So broken, so broken. I already forgot what I said about these. I'll have to watch my video and then label this when I rewatch my video. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Can't hold the camera and paint at the same time. I think it's really, really fun. Look at what we created. Just a sec. <laughs> she just loves him and he does not know what to do with her. Get the kitty, Duffy. Get the kitty. Or ignore me. That works. Get the kitty. Get the kitty. Get the kitty. Okay, or not. <laughs> she just wants him to love her. Duffy, where's the kitty? He's into the fox. Kitty does not exist.